Okay, great. Hello, everybody. Thank you for coming. We'll call this uh, meeting to order Wednesday, March 2nd, 4 p.m. Present this afternoon, myself, Natasha Yakovlev, and Helen Kahn. And as a reminder, this meeting is being recorded. Is there anybody here for public comment? Seeing none, we'll move on to agenda item number three. Request a date and time amendment on a short-term liquor license that was approved March 4th, 2020, which feels like a hundred years ago. <laughs> um, <laughs> this is for the Ireland Forever Foundation DBA Ireland Forever Festival at the Three County Fairgra Fairgrounds for Saturday, June 4th, 2022 from 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. And this is for the Irish Cultural Festival featuring music, dancing, food, and beverage. And this is an all alcohol event license. Um, so we're just changing the date, Annie? Yeah, you might wanna get an update since it's been a few years. Um, okay. There may have been some changes. Is someone here from that organization? That's Tim Driscoll, right? Yeah, I see possible he's here. I see an Ann Driscoll. Oh, okay. I see a Tim Driscoll too. Tim, if you can hear us, can you unmute? Uh, how can you see me? Yes. yes. Good. Okay. Hi there. Thank you for coming. Excuse me. I'm going to turn off my computer because okay. I had two devices because I'm so inadequate with technology. <laughs> I had a backup. But I was getting an echo. <laughs> uh, I still have the the license from uh, two years ago where the fee was 102. So if I'm approved, I, I may owe you guys a few bucks. Okay. But I was bound and determined after it was canceled two times. I said, I don't care. I'm just going to keep coming back because <laughs> COVID wasn't going to win. No, it's going to happen this time, I think. Yeah, yeah. Has I'm anything good about that. Do you have any updates on the event? Has anything changed or you just want to tell us about it again since it was a long it's, it's time ago? It's the same lineup, the, the same bands and the, uh, dancing. Um, I don't know if I mentioned it last time, but uh, to help me, I've got a lot more assistance this time, but I have uh, John Colner, um, nicknamed Klon, he used to own Klondike Sounds up in Greenfield. He um, He's done the stage and sound as well as kind of the layout for for many music uh, events, including the New Orleans Jazz Festival, Newport Folk Festival, and he's been all around the world and he lives in Turner's Falls. Um, so he's kind of semi-retired. He's a friend of Gary Bogoff, the owner of Berkshire Brewing, which is how I hooked up with him. So he's been very helpful. Um, I've got insurance through um, Peter Whalen at Whalen Insurance. Um, I noticed, I think the city requires 250,000. I have 1 million and uh, 2 million aggregate. And I'll be including uh, both the city, the fairgrounds, as, as well as um, myself and the foundation. I have contacted um, fire department, Andy Peerless, uh, for the, to have fire in an ATM down there. Is that right, ATM? No, that's not ATM, EMT. Uh, Andy used to actually uh, be a bar back and bartender for me when I owned City Cafe. Um, I also contacted the police department, John Cartledge, because we'll need some police out in the street to handle traffic. Uh, for security, I'm using the same security that um, the fairgrounds is used, and that's Jason Clifford with GMCS. Um, I'm also going to complement that with a couple of guys on the Holyoke Parade Committee that are with me that run the road race. And that's certainly a, a large crowded event, and they've got all sorts of walkie talkies that he said we could use. So that would be a nice compliment. I'm also gonna be telling everybody that the staff and all the volunteers that they are all a part of security, eyes and ears watching everybody. Um, that's the way it was when I had City Cafe. Um, I believe in that doesn't mean they handle it. They talk to somebody else if, if there's an issue and hopefully there won't be. Um, I don't know, any other questions you have might have. I'm just looking forward to it. The, the, the bands are great um, and uh, I'm getting a pretty good response. That's great. Um, Helen, do you have any questions? Um, 
No, except I'm just seeing a note that I guess, is this true that we're still waiting on the tips and liquor liability? Um, Annie, no, is that we, still we have that. Or, no. Yeah, they, they have, we have that approved from uh, Whalen Insurance. She just hasn't gotten the certificate yet, but it is, it's paid for. Okay. And there's tips certification also? Is, yeah, I'm, I'm tip certified. Okay. I'm tip certified. I just, I scored a 96. I thought that would impress you all. Bravo. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Gary Bogoff um, and his crew from Berkshire Brewing will be, um, pouring their own beer, that Gary's certified and all the sales uh, people, all the people pouring beer will be certified. Um, two years ago I had, and I'll get for the other pourers, um, people from the Holyoke Parade Committee because they also supply pourers at the Big E. Uh, so I had like uh, 15 to 20 of those. A lot of them expire, but we'll get them up to speed and, and they'll be helping as well. Plus I have some old friends and contacts that want to help bartend. But yeah, every, I'll make sure everybody's certified. How many people do you anticipate coming? Well, <laughs> I was surprised when I went in and Jamie told me, I knew the indoor facility was big, but he said the capacity was 6,000. I went, holy wow. moly. <laughs> I, uh, I don't want 6,000. Mm -hmm. um, even though if I sold 6,000, I know that Many of those would be older people that went to watch the early dancing and the more mellow Irish music. They're not going to be there for Unforgettable Fires, you know, last set. Uh, but I want to be uh, more conservative. I might shut it off at 45 or 5,000. Mm -hmm. um, boy, I'd be happy if that was the number. Yeah. But yeah, and, and, and the bar and the food close at nine. Um, with, with the liquor part, I might, Bushmills Irish Whiskey might actually bring in a, 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 a bar on, on a flatbed with things that fold out with darts. It looks really cool. We won't be using darts. Just, that's how <laughs> um, I get a kick out of those places that have the hatchet throw. Yeah. It's like, are you kidding me? Drinking <laughs> in a hatchet throw. So no darts. Not um, on your watch. <laughs> but... Um, with with the bar, it'll be very limited. I may even just stick with Irish uh, coffee, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, Bushmills, as their sponsor and bringing this, they they might want more, which which um you know, a whiskey and ginger ale or something like that. But um, believe me, I'm knowing that this is the first year, the inaugural event, and that there's a lot of pent up yeah. energy. Like I think people will be excited to get out, and and knowing that, uh, we're going to be extra vigilant on their consumption and sure. enjoyment. Sounds wise. So, so Tim, it is it is in all sport, is that where it is? Yes, it's gonna be inside and also outside. Outside they have that large open air pavilion that I think the horses jog around. It's right to the left. If you're facing the pavilion, there's a large open uh, pavilion. And that, I, I believe, we're going to have on the far right, that's where the lineup will food will be. And uh, we'll have the picnic tables under there. And I think we'll have a small stage where the Duffy Academy can dance and like a DJ for music uh, and a beer truck there. Um, handling the food, by the way, is um, Richie Lyman from Myers Catering in um, East Hampton. Uh, he's a friend of mine. He's also a sponsor. Um, and we're getting a lot of the, he has like 450, 500 uh, chairs, tables, tents. So uh, that's saving me a big expense by having Richie involved. And he's prepared, I'll be keep giving him updates to have um, backup food trucks uh, to bring in. So we'll be, we'll be communicating quite a bit, but he, he's handled large functions. Sounds good. Yeah, um, knock on wood, it happens. Yeah, knock on wood. It, yeah, it seems good. Um, Helen or Annie, do you have anything else? I do, I do not. I do not either. Um, so we're ready to make a motion. Can can I, we just make a contingent upon me getting the rest yep. of the paperwork? Okay. Yep. I'll make a motion then to amend the date and time for the short-term liquor license that was approved March 4th, 2020 as outlined in agenda item number three 
contingent upon receiving all tips and liquor liability certificates as required. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Natasha? Yeah. Yes. And Helen? Yes. Great. Thank you, Tim. Good luck. Hey, Good hey, luck. Is, the, is the fee 106 now? No, it's still 102. Um, okay. Once you have everything, all your paperwork, just bring bring all that in. Yeah, okay. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, bye-bye. Thanks. Item number four, applications for short-term liquor licenses for the Academy of Music Incorporated, 274 Main Street. Uh, this is for wine and malt, and a fee waiver is requested for the following events. Friday, March 4th, 2022, 6 to 11 p.m., Aoife O'Donovan. Sunday, March 6th, 2022, 6 to 11 p.m., Ricky Lee Jones. Saturday, March 12th, 2022, 7 to 11 p.m., The Machine Performs Pink Floyd. Tuesday, March 15th, 2022, 7 to 11 p.m., The High Kings. Wednesday, March 18th, 2022, 7 to 11, The Psychedelic Furs. Wednesday, March 23rd, 7 to 11, Devin Allman. Is Melissa here? Hello, how are you? I'm good, how are you? Good, thank you. Um, has anything changed? Nothing's changed. Nothing's changed. Then I will make, um, unless Helen, do you have any questions? No, just congratulations on this cool lineup. Yes. <laughs> hey, thanks. Yeah, I'll be there you for a couple some throwbacks in there. Yeah. <laughs> and we're putting in the new concession stand right now. So oh, that's fun. Probably won't be done for a month or so, but it's, it's almost there. So. Yep. Nice. Yeah. Good. All right. Um, then I will make a motion to approve the applications for short term liquor licenses as outlined in agenda item four, as well as grant the requested fee waiver. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Tasha. Yes. And Helen. Yes. Great. Thanks, Melissa. Thanks, guys. All right. Next up, agenda item number five, application for short-term liquor license, Drawing Board Brewing Company, 36 Main Street in Florence, Saturday, March 19th, 12 to 10 p.m. for a St. Patrick's Day celebration. And this is for a wine and malt license. And... Corey is here. M. Hi, Corey. How are you? Doing well, thank you. How are you? Excellent. Do you just want to tell us about this event? Yep. So this is going to be pretty much the same as the past events we've had, um, except this time, if all goes well, we may be able to move some of the activities indoors. The bar is getting pretty darn close to being done. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, hopefully next time I appear in front of you will be for our permanent license. Great. Nice. And the recent events have been going well that you've done? Yeah, they've been going very well. Yeah. Good. Helen, do you have any questions? I do not. Do you want to make this motion then? I would love to do that. I will make a motion to approve the application for a short-term liquor license for Drawing Board Brewing Company as detailed in item five on the agenda. I will second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And Natasha? Yes. And Helen? Yes. Great. Thanks, Corey. Thank you. Next up, item number six, application for transfer of common victualler license from Nourish Juice Bar LLC DBA Nourish Wellness Cafe to Nourish Wellness Cafe LLC DBA Nourish Wellness Cafe at 10 Bridge Street. And we have somebody here, Casey. Hi. Hi, thanks for coming. We haven't met you yet, so you want to let us know a little bit about what you're up to? Yeah, um, I've worked at the Nourish Cafe for the last like three and a half years now. I took over managing about a year and a half ago, and um, the last few months um, have made the decision to take over Nourish. Um, I officially sat and we made the agreements on the 15th of this past month and uh, had the Board of Health and the Fire Department and everyone come in and do um, all of their uh, checks for everything, everything passed. And uh, we opened up on the 22nd. Um, and yeah, I think everything is in order. 
Good. Have you made any changes or are you, are you operating pretty much the same? Uh, yeah, exactly the same. No changes. Square foot is the same. Uh, no new equipment or anything. Nice. That's exciting. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Uh, Helen, do you have any questions for Casey? I don't know. I was going to say congratulations too. That's a big move. Um, so Thank you. you. <laughs> yeah, I'm no, so excited. Good. Um, well, I have no further questions, so we'll go ahead and approve the application for transfer of common common Vixler license as detailed in agenda item number six. Thank you so much. Do you have a second? Second. second? Yeah. All and Natasha? Yes. And Helen? Yes. Great. Thanks, Casey. All right. Good luck. With you. Thank you so much. Have a great day. You too. Okay, next we have item seven, applications for short-term liquor licenses for Building 8 Brewing at 320 Riverside Drive for Wine and Malt on March 5th, 2022, 7 to 11 for live music at Bombix at 130 Pine Street in Florence. Um, I apologize, my dogs are gonna start barking. I see it coming any second now. Um, <laughs> March 12th and 13th, 2022 from 6 to 11 p.m. Again at Bombix, 130 Pine Street in Florence. March 19th, 2022, 7 to 11, live music at Bombix, 130 Pine Street in Florence. And again on the 26th from 6 to 11 for more live music at Bombix at 130 Pine Street in Florence. And again on April 1st, 6 to 11 uh, with live music at 33 Holly Street. And hello, O'Brien. Hi. Um, I'm keeping my dogs at bay with, uh, okay. <laughs> with got, got a very close partner right here, right now. I need to but get the program. It's so wet outside, though. I'm not putting her out without guidance, you know. Right. You know, mess. But good um, to see you all. Good to see you. So there's a lot going on at Bombex. Yeah, there's actually more dates that, that are happening that I've applied for based on the last couple um you know, we did a whole series of them there. It was just a little sluggish on the during the week shows. And uh, so we just kind of picked the uh, Friday, Saturday or Saturday, Sunday events mm -hmm. and uh, thinking people be more likely for that. And I think they're uh, removing some pews to allow a little bit of dancing or something as well, which would allow in the past the uh, the, the we weren't letting the alcohol into the out of the room where we were serving so now I think the plan is going to be I think we're going to move a little closer and then it'll be uh, in the sacristy sort of right across the hall so to speak you know um, but it's been it's been okay we've been kind of covering costs basically <laughs> so but I'm really believing what they're doing there so I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a good you know I'm, I'm about all about that and it, sorry I'm getting used to the phone thing here and we're uh, but we're um we're happy to be there and uh, do what we can, you know, so. Um, and then the 33 Holly, I'm working with the Northampton Arts Council, specifically with Steve Sanderson. Uh, basically, it's a jazz band that'll be playing. Uh, and what they will be playing is uh, jazz songs that were sampled by the band, A Tribe Called Tw Quest. Mm -hmm. And so they're going to be playing actually the jazz originals that all those songs were kind of taken from. Nice. So I think a little, hopefully it's going to be a little older crowd and uh, that'll be kind of into that, you know, so it's a very niche sort of thing, but I'm happy to do it. And, uh, you know, we're, uh, we're going to be there and, you know, hopefully it'll be a nice Friday night and really happy to be there for the 33 Holly. You know, I had poured at their uh, first open house mm -hmm. and uh, spent a good day there. So I like that too. So great. It's a great venue. Yeah. Uh, Helen, do you have any questions for O'Brien? I do not. Um, yeah, keep doing what you're doing. And I'll, I know. I'll go ahead and make a motion to approve the application for short-term liquor licenses as detailed in item seven on the agenda. I'll second the motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> Nat Natasha? Yes. And Helen? Yes. Thank you. Thanks, O'Brien. Thank you very much. Have a good rest of your night. You too. <laughs> Moving on to item number eight, applications for outdoor dining extensions into public spaces. Think Tank Brewing LLC, DBA Progression Brewing Company at 9 Pearl Street. Uh, this is for the Pearl Street and Railroad Ave area and Local Burger Incorporated 16 Main Street who will be setting up on Strong Ave. And yes. Yes. Uh, <laughs> 
Annie, I had one question. All right. This is all separate from Summer on Strong, correct? Yes. This is regular this old is, work. Yes. This okay. is pre Summer on Strong. Um, this, this round of outdoor dining will start April 5th. Um, and these are the only applications I've gotten so far that have liquor. Okay. Um, Summer on Strong will be coming at a future meeting. Okay, great. Then let's start with progression hey. with Drew. Hi, everyone. How are you? Good, how are you? Good. Um, so how did it go for you last year having sort of two outdoor spaces? Um, it went great. Um, it was um, certainly a boon in June and July when people were really getting back out again. Um, it was rather smooth system-wise. Um, we didn't run into any issues with people and That's great. Um, mm -hmm. felt like it was very, very natural. Um, so it was nice. Aside from having scaffolding in front of our building the entire summer. It wasn't an ideal. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> people didn't seem to mind too much, so. That's you know. good. Instructions over upstairs. That's, that's good. Oh, well, that's good. <laughs> um, and what's going upstairs? Um, the district attorney's office has expanded. Oh, the state, okay. state police. So they've actually moved above us now and they're rehabbing the older section. Okay. And then, so there is no derelict space left in the building. I, that's I don't great. Think, so. Good. Yeah. All right. Um, since we have two applications here, I'll move on to Jeff at Local Burger. And hello, hello. How did it go for you last year on Strong? Oh, it was great. It uh, pretty much got us through the through the summer. Uh, yeah. Without, it, without it, I'm not sure where we, where we would have been. Um, it was great for everybody. It seemed like. Um, yeah. It went well. No no issues. I guess the only issue was people from other restaurants using our space, which was fine. Yeah. So I guess we're this year going to add some additional space for other restaurants, which is nice. Nice. But other, than that, other than that, it was great. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Um, Helen, do you have any questions? Um, no, because I mean, it's pretty much you're setting up, both of you are setting up the same way you did last year. Right, exactly. So. Just to repeat. Yep. Yes. Yeah, I don't, I don't have any questions now. Before you um, make motions, can, um, we need to take them separately. Okay. And then, um, just make note that you need to include the sidewalk in between for transportation purposes only. Okay. Is there a specific way you want us to word that, which I've forgotten since last year? Um, <laughs> including the sidewalk for transportation. For okay. transportation of alcohol, is it? Yeah, so if you could Um, yeah, you know, this is my fault. I should have. So if on the spreadsheet I sent you for, um, under the description of proposed area, mm -hmm. um, if you could just, then can, if you could just read that language. Okay. Helen, do you have yours in front of you? I, I do. Do you yeah. Hold on one second, Helen. Okay. Okay. Um, Should I go for it? Or I see yeah. that. Up there. Uh, yep, go for it. Yeah. Um, so I'll make a motion to approve the application for outdoor dining extensions into public spaces for Think Tank Brewing, um, including the addition of 11 tables, 54 chairs, and umbrellas to Union Street patio and three parking spots and one non parking spot on Pearl Street with 10 tables, 40 chairs to include. Sidewalk in between limited to transportation only. I think that's it. I will second that motion. And Natasha? Yes. And Helen? Yes. 
Um, can I, uh, I was gonna ask for an amendment to include the dates. Um, yes, can we, can I get a, a motion for an amendment and a second to amend the dates to April 5th through November 15th? Um, yeah. Um, so I'll make a motion to amend the approval <laughs> um, to uh, include the dates April 5th through November 15th, 2022. Second. Um, and Natasha. Yes. And Helen. Yes. Thank you. Um, so for the next one, you just want me to include the dates in the. Please. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I'll make a motion to approve uh, the application for outdoor dining extensions into public spaces for local Burger Inc. at 16 Main Street to include eight tables, six four tops, and two two tops space on Strong Avenue and three parking spots, uh, including the sidewalk in between limited to transportation only for the dates April 5th through November 15th, 2022. I will second. And Natasha? Yes. And Helen? Yes. Thank you. All right. All right. So you guys are all set. Thank you. Thank you very much. Say thank you. It's made a huge difference for us. So. Yeah, it does. Yeah, it's going to help, it's going to help a ton. Everything you guys are doing. Yeah. Well, thank it's fun you. to see. COVID okay. or not, it's nice to have restaurants outside. So yeah, <laughs> yeah it's great for great for everybody. Yeah. So. All right. Thank you. Thank you guys. Uh, thank you. Next up, item number nine: application for a transfer of common bookstore license, transfer from Patisserie Lennox, transfer to Anna Bandera Chocolates, Northampton LLC, DBA Anna Bandera Chocolates. And do we have someone here? Hi there. You wanna? Hi, I'm Dave. Hi, Dave. How's it going? Good. How are you? Good. Do so you want to tell us about this venture? Yeah. Uh, so this kind of came up a little bit suddenly for us. Uh, I have a chocolate company in Brazil, a small chocolate company. We make uh, tree to bar chocolate. So my wife's family has a, has a chocolate farm. It's been running for about four generations. Uh, and we now are making chocolate out of the cacao from that farm. Uh, and we have a, a store and cafe in Brazil. Um, we've been planning to expand to the United States and import to ourselves and sell our chocolate in the US. And then when I saw Patisserie Lennox was closing, I said, oh, well, maybe this is a good, good spot for us. Uh, they have a lot of the same equipment. Uh, they have kind of the same setup um, as what we are looking for. I mean, we'll, we'll need a few more things uh, once we add the chocolate in, um, but uh, it's kind of the right, right fit at the right time for us. And so, uh, I offered to purchase their assets there, um, and we have an agreement to, to make that purchase at the, um, and transferring ownership on May 1st. Uh, and they're going to continue to supply me with their, uh, with their product for the first six months to kind of help with the transition so that I can take over the, the, the operation kind of as is. Uh, learn the process. The employees are going to stay on. They're going to work with us. We have already made, you know, formed a, a good relationship. Um, and it's looking like it'll be a fairly smooth transition. Uh, I've had the health department come in. Um, they had a list of things that I'll need to make sure that I get updated before we make that transition. But um, they all were small things that I can do in a few days. Um, I talked to the building department and they said, if we're not making any changes, we don't, I don't need anything from them. And then I talked to the fire chief or the fire inspector. He went in and just yesterday, um, and I haven't heard back from him yet. So I'll, I'll have to hear what his report is. Um, but again, if there's, you know, if there are any issues, then we'll take care of them. If it's a big issue, we'll, you know, we'll ask the landlord to take care of it or find a way around it. Um, and that's, that's the plan. Uh, 
it's a new venture. I mean, it's a new, I've never opened a business in Northampton, so I'm excited and nervous about it, but uh, it's a beautiful spot. I've you know enjoyed their product for years and um, it, you know, it kind of fits in perfectly w- with what we're already doing. So mm-hmm. I'm hoping it'll be a, a very, very smooth transition. So you, you plan to serve menu items as sort of like what's being served now and then supplementing it with your yeah. chocolates from Brazil? Yeah, the, the basic plan is to try to change as little as possible in the first six, you know, first month or two, actually. So we'll continue doing uh, sandwiches and uh, they kind of do light fare food. So, you know, eggs and toast and croissants and things. Uh, we'll take, we'll, we'll be baking, we'll be buying the croissants from Jean-Yves, the current uh, baker there, and then proofing and baking them at the location. Um, and then doing soups and salads and that, that the light fare kind of as they are. I would imagine that we'll by by the time six months are up, we'll have seen a significant change in the menu because there will be things that we're going to do differently than what they're doing. Yep. Um, but yeah, that essentially do the same stuff, bring in chocolate, uh, and then just kind of add in and fill in the gaps, try and have a, a nice full menu. That's great. Well, it's, it's great to know that it won't be empty. <laughs> yeah. and we'll have a, a fun new business in town. Yeah, we're excited. I think, I mean, I I love our product. I'm very excited about it. I mean, I have a lot of friends and obviously in the town and people have been asking for years since, since I started this company when they can get it uh, in the US. So I'm really excited to be able to offer it to them. So that's really I look forward to developing a habit of this chocolate. <laughs> 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 Great. <laughs> Helen, do you have any questions? Uh, no, but I'm looking forward to it too. It sounds great. Yeah, um, yeah my mouth is starting to water just thinking about I it. Know. <laughs> I know. I did, I have to say, when I saw this on the agenda, I did I did go to, to your uh, Facebook page and stuff and was like, oh. this is exciting business. Yeah, go, go to our Instagram. Our Instagram is the best one. So. <laughs> <laughs> We'll do that. What we use the most. It's all in Portuguese still, but uh, we're gonna. We'll, I'll know, work around it. <laughs> make it happen. Google Translate. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so I see that you need the workers' comp proof, Annie, in the affidavit. Yes. Okay. And so you're working on that. Yeah, I met with the insurance uh, agent yesterday. So okay. I'm just waiting for, uh, you know, to get all the quotes back. We'll pick the best one and purchase it. Really done. Okay, great. Helen, do you have any other questions? No, I don't. No. Okay. I have, a, I have a question. Um, mm-hmm. Dave, are you changing the name, like the signage outside the business? Yeah. Okay. They're, they're going to take down their name right away. Um, <laughs> actually, this is a thing I should ask you. What are, one of our concerns is because because this is happening a little bit before our our chocolate timeline was ready for us to be importing, um, we're not going to have chocolate for the first little while. And so I wanted to open up. I don't want to open up a store that says "Ana Bandera Chocolate" and then not have any chocolate to sell. <laughs> so my plan was to, you know, get the sign, maybe get the sign made, and then put like a an obvious little like you know those like. It's coming soon. Sticker signs yeah. that'll say like temporary cafe or something. And then we can have a big opening when the chocolate is ready and actually have the, the full the full deal uh, hopefully later this year um, once we have everything ready to go. Yeah. So I don't know if that, that works or not, but I, I think that should be fine. Okay. Yeah. Cool. All right. Yeah. Cool. Well, we're excited. Excellent. All right, then. Um, if we're ready for a motion, I'll make a motion to transfer the common mixture license as detailed in agenda item number nine, contingent upon the workers' comp proof and affidavit. Second. All in favor? Okay. Aye. And Natasha? Yes. And Helen? Yes. Thank you. Great. Thanks for coming and good luck. Thank we'll you. See you. Yeah, good luck with it. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. See ya. Dave, I'll email you in the morning. Oh, he's gone. I will email him in the morning. All right. Um, 
Item number 10, request approval of 2022 seasonal liquor license renewals pending receipt of all appropriate documents. Hampshire Franklin and Hamden Agricultural Society Beer Hall, Hampshire Franklin and Hamden Agricultural Society Infield, Florence Pie Bar, Sang Chawan Incorporated DBA Tai Tai, Frank Newell Look Memorial Park Incorporated DBA Pine Theater, T Roots Incorporated DBA T Roots, Iconica Social Club LLC, and Cafe Balagan LLC. So I sent out um, March is the renewal season for the seasonals. I sent out renewal paperwork yesterday. Um, I don't foresee any issues with any of these renewals. Okay. And you need a motion for this, yeah? I do, yes. Okay, and I'll make a motion to approve um, the 2022 seasonal liquor license renewals pending receipt of appropriate documents for um, the locations outlined in agenda item number 10. Second. Great. And Natasha? Yes. And Helen? Yes. Item 11, approval of minutes from February 3rd, 2022. I'll make a motion to approve those minutes. Second. Great. And Natasha? Yes. And Helen? Yes. And uh, number 12, new business. Um, I was just gonna say, we have a question in the chat and I, I guess I don't even know the oh. formal way to deal with that in these meetings. So I don't know if you wanna to respond to Nicole. Oh. Hi, Nicole. No, this is not a, a meeting to discuss the closing of Strong Ave for Summer on Strong. Um, I, I mean, Natasha, you're the chair. Would, would you like me to ask her to unmute? Um, yeah, that, I'm fine with that. If we take a minute to address any confusion. Nicole, if you wanna unmute. Nicole, did that clear, clear it up for you? Hi. Um... They're unmuting you. Hi, it's um, Carla Racine, actually. Hi. Hi. Was that was that clear what Annie's response was to the question? Um, no, I didn't. Actually, I did not hear the response because I was that on the phone with. Okay, it's not Strong Avenue that we're talking about right now. No, we're not talking about Strong Avenue yet. That okay. probably won't come until the March meeting. The, and there may, may be I'm sorry, April. We're in. It is March. I just got so you just threw me back in time. I'm like, I'm what really sorry about that. that. I went there sorry. with you. <laughs> I apologize. I was on the phone with Kayla from Majestic right now. I have her on the phone with me, and uh, we were just wondering about when we're very in the dark, kind of, and we just want to be able to know when that topic's coming up. And we, yeah, can't, I can't reach the people from familiars. I've tried several times to no avail. And um, I just, we just want to know what's going on. Sure. Yeah. So, I mean, so we don't, we, we won't know also until they're on the agenda for approval. So you could reach out to the downtown Northampton Association to Amy I, Kathleen. I have. Okay. So, Carla, uh, we, yes. Carla, hi, Annie. Hi. We, we Sorry, my camera's not on and I think it is. Okay. <laughs> Okay. So, so you weren't able, I know you talked to Amy the other day. I talked to you the other day. You, you weren't able to get in touch with anyone or Danny or Isaac. No. Did you, did you happen to go over there? I, I, they, they only do outdoor service. So there's really no going over there. I mean, I could try to get them in the morning or something, but when they're going on, when they're. Okay. Uh, yes. I talked to Isaac yesterday about the pride thing. I mean, I can message him on your behalf if you want. That would be lovely. Yeah. Thank you. Said, yeah. If, me? I'm if sorry. Guys, since we don't have any, and I apologize, we don't have any information about how, who to contact, how to contact, or when, other than, you know, Amy at DNA would be my first go-to or familiars because I think that they're- I have, they're I've contacted them three different times yeah. over the last over the last seven weeks. Yeah, I just don't want to take up all the time of or time in this meeting because we really don't have any information. Oh, well, my only concern is that they're not going to blockade Strong Avenue on the 5th. No, I we're no not. not the, okay, I, that's all. That's, that's okay. where the confusion was. Thank you. Okay. No, Carla, there's going yes. to be a neighborhood meeting in a few weeks 
about Strong Ave and you will be invited. Will it be an email from you, Annie, or an email from Amy? No, I believe there, um, the Summer on Strong folks are going to be going door to door with flyers. Door to door. Can, door to, can they make an assurance that the businesses on Strong Avenue are actually given the information and that they have a checklist just to, to be proper about it, to make sure that we know? Because I know that Volkan's unaware. He's on vacation right now. He should be back this He's weekend. He's unaware because nobody's been told about it yet because we're still we're still we're still organizing it. Okay. Um, so I I can make a note to specifically email you if that would help. That would be very helpful. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. Thank okay. You. Thanks, Helen. Thank you for catching that note. I didn't even see it pop up. Yeah. yeah sure. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> All right. Okay, so what were we talking about? New business. Um, there's a possibility of a special meeting in March, which... Yeah, so um, I, I don't know if there's going to be one. I have already gotten a few applications um, after... I don't think we're going to need one because barriers are being dropped April 5th for just specific locations, like for just local, just progression. Um, La Vera Cusana will probably want to be involved in that and Dirty Truth. Um, but I don't think, and then our meeting is April, is the next day. I don't think anybody's going to be out right when the barriers are dropped on the fifth. It's I think okay. it's too soon. So I don't think we're going to need one. Right. So let's not even talk about it. Fantastic. Okay. Okay. Um, I have a question. Are we at some point going to be resuming our meetings in person. I know that the Zoom thing was going to be through April. So it's through July 15th, okay. 2022. Okay. So if you, yes, I don't know, there may be something that we have, if we went back in person, we'd have to offer it hybrid until then. Yeah. But um, do you have a burning desire to go back? Okay. No, I'm just curious <laughs> I'm just curious yeah no it's nice it's I mean it was nice having the meetings in person but it's nicer to have this level of accessibility for people to be able to attend the meetings from their office you know and not have to interrupt their work day yeah yeah it, it's very convenient I mean is there the possibility that this is how it would continue or that's a discussion for or no, because it's it's a it's state open meeting law. Okay. And so so the extension is at the state level. Mm -hmm. Okay. So no, I don't believe that's an option. Come July fifteenth. Right. Okay. Helen, do you have any new business? I do not. No, nothing new. Nothing new. Annie, do you have anything else? Um. No, I don't. All right, then I will make a motion to adjourn. And I will second. Excellent. And Natasha? Yes. And Helen? Yes. 